Good morning, all, uh, uh, and welcome to our May presentation um, hosted by Federal Emergency Relief Program team. Uh, as you can see, uh, some of our colleagues are attending um, some other commitments this morning. So I am Maisha Asha, Federal Fiscal Coordinator, and we have uh, Shady Sashi Jondro, our Director of Federal Fiscal uh, Federal Emergency Relief Program team, and we have Karen Kuziak, who is also okay now. Um, Okay, um, uh, who is our uh, ARP ESR coordinator? And we have Deanna Roberts, management analyst. Um, and also Terry Bill, management analyst. And you can see um, some of our colleagues are present here. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Natalie Owens. Uh, my title is procurement analyst and my connection to my work with the schools has a lot to do with the reservation funding and uh, the smaller grants. Good morning, I'm Kevin Harrington. I'm the GEAR and EANS coordinator. Uh, on the EANS side, it's with the non-public schools. Uh, recently have uh, moved over to help out with the ESSER funds and uh, learning a lot of things about ESSER and performance reviews. Okay. So today we will have some um, just few um, agenda that we will go over. Um, let's start with the timeline and spending of ESR ARP grant. So as in this slide, we try to re, um, you know present as of May 1st, we have still 141 million five hundred seventy seven thousand seven hundred twenty dollar remaining in ARP ESR funds and we have 152 days remaining for obligated all, all these funds. And we all know it needs to be obligated by September 30th, 2024. And invoicing can be done by December 30, 2024. And as we always encourage, the um, earlier is better. And um, in, this, um, in this timeline, you can see that there are 20 SAUs who has, you know, in, in between 100% to 75% remaining in their total allocation. 23 SAUs are there who has more than 50% in their re, uh, allocation remaining. And the 48 SAUs still have more than 25% uh, remaining in their allocation, and there is on, only 90 SAUs who are, you know, um, on the timeline. I mean, they are. They seems good, and they are in between. Um, you know, it's more than 20, uh, less than 25 percent remaining in their ESR fund. So we just wanted to make sure. I mean, just to have this um, slide. Uh, uh, before you, so that we, uh, you know we um, uh, realize where we are. I know you can see where you are in that timeline and uh, take the, the uh, steps to make it, um, you know, to make all those uh, funds um, obligated prior to September 30th. So in, 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 in uh, talking about ARP um, ESR funding, and um, this is very, um, you know, common issues that we find that SAUs are uh, finding that um, they might be, there might be some reimbursement under incorrect project or wrong project, or sometimes they are doing some revisions um, and want to, you know, uh, adjust the budget in the new project. So anything is, uh, anything such happen, we need to make sure, we need to know that um, if you have to move some money from one project to another project, you have to return the money under that project and you can reimburse that amount of money later on when, the, when everything is processed from our side. So because ARP ESR funding is project-based 
and uh, and that's why we have to uh, we we just cannot um, uh, allow to add some money from one one project to another project in the James side. It has to be very um, uh, you know clear from your side and process wide as well. So we will we will host a late liquidation um, extension session only dedicated. We will talk about how we can process the late liquidation ex extension and what will be the you know what will be some of the reasons that we can consider a late liquidation and um, and the process to request that uh, late liquidation and it will be on May twenty first. 2024 at 11 a.m. And here is the link that I will post in the chat in a bit. So um, yeah, we will um, definitely like you all to attend that to have some more detailed information on late liquidation extension. Hey, good morning. I'm gonna talk about the uh, performance report and hopefully these things won't be a shock to you, but I'll go down through them. Uh, as I said, I'm new to ESSA, but I spend a lot of time lately with performance reports and uh, reopening applications and whatnot in various projects that folks want to change, add, or whatnot. They uh, want to tweak in some fashion. So feel free to give me a holler. Karen will be back in another week, um, but I will be uh, doing my best in juggling a few things uh, for the next week or so on ESSA stuff. So uh, as far as the ESSA, F fiscal year 2023 ESSA performance report, uh, we had asked to get them in by April 12th, and it was, a bunch of them did come in, a whole bunch, by the way, on the 11th and the 12th. Uh, but if you haven't been able to do that or you need some help, please give a holler, and we'll we'll help you to get that straightened out. The report is based on reimbursements in fiscal year 2023, and sometimes that does get to be a little kind of like, all right, what year am I talking about here? But so it's 7 one through 6 30 uh, but that is the time frame. So it, there's some information you probably recognize the 4PCA is the GEM site. Uh, if you have any issues getting in there, let us know. Uh, that seems to be working out pretty well in recent months. Uh, we also have a 67.74 completion rate as of May 1st. So they're coming along, but uh, please get those in. And by the way, as they come in, we are tracking them and, and doing the reviews and so forth. Uh, some days only a few come in and other days uh, you know, a dozen or more coming on all at once. So between Karen and I and a few other folks, we've been working through those uh, and then letting folks know one way or the other uh, through the GEM system and, and or an email or phone call, various things that need to be adjusted or if all as well. Uh, we're trying to get the 100% completion rate by the 15th. And uh, we on our side have a bunch of stuff so uh, that we have to report also to the Federal Department of Education. So kind of the sooner we get your stuff in, we review it, get everything squared away, we can then compile that data and get it over to our uh, counterparts at the federal level. And uh, that's working out pretty well. There's a couple of resources here on the bottom for you that uh, work out pretty well. If you, again, have any questions or whatnot, uh, I know uh, folks have been emailing and some phone calls and so forth lately. By coincidence, it also happens to be our team's uh, ESA, well, ESF, the reporting that we have to do is going on with a lot of these different grants. So it's been a very kind of busy time, but we will get to you. So if you're able to call or email or whatnot, we will, in fact, catch up with you and uh, answer anything we can. That's all I have on the ESA report at this time. So before we jump into the next slide, we do have some question in the chat. And thank you, okay. Kevin. You answered the first one. Like, oh. <laughs> as, yeah, yeah, Karen, Karen, Karen is on vacation this week. So yeah, Kevin is the person to reach out if you have any question regarding performance reports or um, uh, ESAR ARP grants. So yep. uh, another question I see from uh, Dennis, um, after adjusting our application to move funds, what is the rough turnaround time for approval of the revised application? So I believe it is, uh, yeah. Yeah, I will let uh, Kevin to uh, answer that. So it, again, new to answer, well, but I know as far as the timing, I can't say a certain amount of days, but what I have done is as soon as I see it crop up, I go back in as soon as possible and and make uh, review it and make the any suggestions or or approve it. And then on your end, you should get in most, I haven't heard anybody complain lately on that one with the, when I approve it or can approve it or whatever, you get a notice through GEM that says that it's been approved. 
So that's kind of your way to, to get that. Um, you can also go in like on what you see on your side and what we see on our side. For instance, ours is a little color coding system. So when you are ready and you submit it, it'll change color on our end. That way we know it's ready to be reviewed and we go ahead and, and do what needs to be done. Um, we've been pretty good about getting right on those quickly. And I know yesterday was a, a really busy day with some other reporting. So we kind of missed the boat on yesterday, but we will make some recovery today. Uh, let's see. I think there was one other one in there that I saw. Yes. Uh, was... Yeah, the last one is what is the best place to confirm that our performance report is all set? Okay. So what happens is you fill out your report, performance report, save and submit it. It goes into onto our side in GEMS, and then we'll go in and review it, and we're just kind of doing it first come, first serve. So as soon as we review it, and it's either reopened or approved, you will get a notice via email. It kind of come, it comes through GEMS, but you will get a notice one way or the other at that point. So similar to if we approved your application, the performance report is very similar in the sense that GEMS will let you know with a uh, an update via the GEMS email system. I think that's all. Yeah, and um, uh, if you mind, Kevin, just put your um, email address in the chat. I will do that. Thank you. I took care of it. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Sure. So some friendly reminders about some about our resource to business managers and program administrators. The fourth Thursday of every month is our office hour, is our federal programs office hour. And we cover fiscal matters like invoicing, time and effort, maintenance of effort, all that good stuff. Please be sure to register for it and to let your business managers we're doing this for the rest of the school year. And here are some resources that we would like to uh, share with you uh, all. Um, and I guess that's about it for this um, May office hour. So if you have any question, I mean, um, our colleagues will be here. Um, you know, for some time. And uh, yeah, and if you would like to um, ask any question, you can put it in the chat, we will be here. So I will, at this point, I will just stop the recording. If anyone wants to unmute themselves and talk to us about some oddball questions that you have. This is a great opportunity. 